Hello everyone, and welcome to the Wandering Village. In a world where mysterious plants are spreading all over the earth, emitting toxic spores as they grow, a small group of survivors seeks shelter on the back of a giant wandering creature they call Anbu. Become their leader, build their settlement, and form a symbiotic relationship with the creature to survive together in this hostile yet beautiful post-apocalyptic world. And this is the latest release from Stray Fawn Studios, who many of you guys may remember and love from Niche, which is one of the most beloved series we've ever had in the pixel biology community. And oh my gosh, I am so excited to be able to step into the Wandering Village. We have already done the demo and fell absolutely in love with this atmospheric and amazing world that reminds me so much of one of my favorite Studio Ghibli movies, Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. Absolutely top tier favorite. I loved the manga as well, even though it got really weird. Just spoilers, it's weird by the end. <laughs> And The Wandering Village does take a lot of inspiration from some of those sources. So, this is going to be a beautiful journey. Without further ado, let's go ahead and we are going to step into this post-apocalyptic landscape. We are going to do our best to truly struggle to survive. This is not going to be easy, as the demo proved. And we are going to try to make the best decisions we can while riding on the back of the Onbu that we owe our entire village's existence to, as we search for the resources we need from the world and try to collect up any of the other human survivors survivors who are desperately searching for help somewhere out there in the wastelands in the wilderness. All right, you guys ready? Yee! Okay, all right, let's see. So we can do novice. The village elder shows you the ropes of how to take care of your settlements. Uh, we could do adept. You start in safe, familiar territory. Take care of your village as you slowly venture into more dangerous regions. And then harsh. The world is a harsh and unforgiving place from the very beginning. Survive by any means necessary. So let's actually go ahead and we're going to try out Adept. And then I think we're going to go ahead and name this. Let's see. New, new Ambu. There we go. New Ambu, which is just like, why not? Here, we're going to go with like. Nuambu. That's going to be the name of our Ombu, Nuambu, because I just think it, I don't know, it's a good name. And we're going to go with Adept because we did play the demo. I don't remember very much of it, but why not go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of a challenge? If I take a peek at the customization of difficulty, it's no manual saving allowed. Villagers do not die and Ombu does not die. Well, we're just going to go for Adept and see if we can handle, like, the ropes. <gasps> Driven from our homes Whoa. with the exposed. We kept wandering, looking for shelter. But not in our wildest dreams did we imagine what we would find. Oh, wow, I forgot about this. Wow. Yeah, can you imagine bonding with that creature? Okay, we need all the tips we can get. Build multiple research. Okay, okay. So let's see. Everybody is kind of idle right now. They all want homes. Here's our Ombu, you guys. It's cold. Okay, we're going to pause just for a second while we kind of like take this all in. <gasps> Look at the little toesies. We have little Ombu toesies down there. So as you can see, we found our Ombu, Nuambu, which is, I'm definitely going to trip over saying that now that I have gone ahead and used <laughs> the name Nuambu to try to make sense of this. And we have 16 villagers. Can I? Oh, I can rename them. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to pull up our Patreon name list in just a second and go ahead and rename our villagers uh, after our patrons, which I'll do in just a little bit here. But first, let's go ahead and take just a quick peek at what we can do for the building menu. <gasps> we can have a little tent. Oh, the little tent looks so cute. Oh my gosh, I love the art so much. And it looks like we have tiny little berry bushes. And because the weather is so cold, the berry bush is not growing very well right now. Good to note. We can also do researcher buildings, which will enable new buildings and technologies to be researched. The worker post, which will be used to manage researchers, make them specialized as transporters, harvesters, or builders. Workers on this building will get a small movement boost. Okay, good to know. Oh, we can also do storage. Water storage is actually really important. Like you wouldn't quite think it, but 
the water is actually a resource that the ombu does not provide us with, right? So we need to find ways to either collect water from the land around us or collect water while we're on the back of the ombu. So that is why the humidity is related to our world is because you're gonna to wanna to draw that water out from where you're at. And speaking of our world, look at this oh look there's a group of travelers over here so there's another group of nomads looking for a home there's a shrine a place that holds ancient artifacts containing forgotten knowledge <gasps> we need a scavenger hunt to be able to go off of the ombu and go scavenge that you can also send scavengers off to go like gather stone which you know you, you can't harvest stone a lot of it at least well on the back of the ombu unless you want to hurt it um, there's also a forest so we could go get wood or mushrooms from what remains of this forest. Oh, and an ombu feeding spot. The ombu itself does need fed. We can actually grow food for our ombu, but I mean, look at the size of him. That can be really hard. So the best thing that you can do to take good care of your ombu is actually make sure that you can get to plenty of ombu feeding spots. So it's good to see that. And it looks like, oh, what's this? Oh, a little ombu sleeping spot. These are really important because the ombu will actually start getting sick and get poisoned as it tries to protect us and guide us through this world that is filled with these toxic spores. So you wanna make sure that you find like comfy sleeping spots for your ombu. Oh my gosh, there's just so much amazing stuff that's gonna happen here. We have some raw food. So we do need to go ahead and take care of that. People seem, housing quality is really bad. So productivity is down. Okay, we'll take care of the houses in just a second. And if we open up the research, cactus plantation, learn how to grow cacti at your farm. Cacti are an alternative water source in hot climates. That's clever. Then of course we have the kitchen so that we could go ahead and process a whole bunch of that food. Tomato plantation, corn plantation, wheat harvesting. Here, let's see, and there's the scout tower so you can increase what you can see in the world. And then what about resources? Dung collector, that's new, collects dung from ombu, which can then be used to produce biogas and fertilizer. Wow. And there's a tree nursery. Once we get the sawmill and you can do a forester to start planting a whole bunch of the seedlings and the ombu itself, we can have a horn blower, which is where you start issuing commands to tell the ombu go forward ombu or like lay down ombu uh, and you can also build the kitchen so that you can turn the mushrooms into food for the ombu you can tell it to sleep you can tell it to eat you can pet it you can give it a doctor to be able to cure it like if you need to cure the poison ombu laxative oh my gosh <laughs> So we might want to really think about some of those things. Uh, where's this? Oh, so there's the scavenger hunt. So send out workers to scavenge rare resources. So we definitely want to build that. I wonder if you have to have the kitchen first. So we'll have to look into that. And we'll need to actually start like building our village. Material storage. Let's see. The air well automatically extracts water from the air, works better at higher humidity levels, no water is produced in deserts. The farm to grow crops, berry gatherer that can gather the berry bushes without damaging them. We have a lot of berry bushes in a few spots, so that might really help us out to put that down. And then what else do we have? Stonecutter carpenter. Oh, the mycologist plants and harvest mushrooms as ingredients for ombu food. Plants must be placed on dirt soil. So this would be like dirt soil. So this would be a great section for maybe growing a bunch of mushrooms. And then these are ombu spikes. And so you don't want to harvest those unless you really want your ombu to be like, why did you do that? That hurt. So I'm going to try not to <laughs> try not to mess with them. Oh, and look, there's a bunch of like berries that are already ready down here. Ooh, and a bunch of stone down here too that we could go ahead and collect without hurting the ombu. So I think we're going to go ahead and maybe start the village down in this section since there's quite a bit there. And there's an herbalist, plant and harvest herbs for medical use, which is very important because we do live in a toxic world and our villagers will actually start building up the toxicity. So you want to look out for that too. And was any of those... So yeah, I think we'll have to do research before we can have 
the ability to have the scavengers go out. So all right, now that we have figured all of that out, let's go ahead. We'll start building some tents. Hopefully people will come down here <laughs> to start building it. Um, but I guess I should put berry gatherer down first. Oh, this is really good. Look at all the berries they can gather. Is this spot better? Maybe? Efficiency 76 or 67? Efficiency 80. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll put a berry gatherer there. All right. And actually, I guess I need to start like harvesting if, I, if I'm going to have people like actually... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need to harvest a few of these things if I'm going to have people actually like working on the berries because the berries... What do we need for the berry gathering? Does it say somewhere? Or let's see, berry gathering, 15 wood, 15 stone. Does it tell me if people already have the wood or stone? We have 30 wood and 30 stone, but I don't know, like, is it, oh, it's just in people's pockets over here. All right. So hopefully some people are gonna be working on that. And meanwhile, um, so we can put, Let's put the material storage right here for now. And then let's go ahead and we can get some of the tents set up over here. We need eight tents since we have, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna need eight tents since we have um, 16 people. Two, maybe I should do them in groups of four. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll have like four people here. And then maybe we'll go ahead and have like a little gap. And then maybe four people over here. And we'll kind of leave a little, we'll, we'll try to leave a little bit of a gap to make it kind of fun for everybody, I say. <laughs> and then research building is gonna be very important. We'll kind of have that in the, well, the research building I feel like might be able to be a little bit away from town since what we're gonna need really to be more central is like the kitchen. So we'll put the research building up here and we're gonna need more resources. So the wood, okay. So let's have people start cutting down more of these trees. And then maybe some more of these trees. People seem a little happy. I'm glad to hear that. Good, good, good. And then villagers will move slightly faster if they're on a dirt road. Well, we'll take care of that as we can. And should I put down an air well? That seems kind of important. <laughs> just to make sure like stores of water seems a little bit important. Just to make sure like everybody has enough water to drink. Uh, but I, I guess I should be careful. Stores all kinds of food for the villagers. Yay! All right, so we do have berry gatherers. I'm going to assign three of our people. And see, look at that. Then they go out in new clothes and they're going to be able to gather berries without hurting it. Oh, and look at the cute berries. Oh, that's so precious. I love seeing all the berries just growing on the house. Is the Ambu moving? Ambu is sleeping. So thankfully we're able to get a lot of this work done before the Ambu starts like shimmying around the world. And then as soon as we get the research hut done, which I guess I can make that set highest priority so people will bring wood and stone up to it. Oh, and we're going to need to harvest some stone. There we go. Oh, is the Ambu moving? I can hear it rustling around in its sleep. And you can hear just like it's gigantic. <laughs> it's absolutely gigantic um, uh, body, like the stones rubbing against each other, which is really cool. All right. And there's a little bit more material over here. We have a hundred water. I do think it's going to be super important to actually have water tanks. Should water tanks be over here? Because if we can farm on that spot, it kind of makes sense to me maybe to keep the water tanks like down here and then put some of the water, the air wells, 10 wood, 10 stone over here. Yeah, I think we definitely need ways to get more water. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that down and set it as like one of the higher priority things. People should be really productive with the houses, but we kind of need to like worry about dying. That seems somewhat important. And then 15 wood, five stone for the water tank, which I'm gonna set also to kind of like medium priority. There we go. 
I can't wait for, yay, just one more wood and we'll be able to go ahead and get a move on. Can I take this down? The giant trunk can be mined for wood if we had a sawmill next to it. So eventually we'll probably want to take down some of these trees. The trees will grow back too, because you can see tiny little trees down. But you want to be careful not to take too many, especially until we can grow them on our Ambu's back. Hi, Ambu! Do I need to build a hornblower soon? So that like people will kind of get a little bit of a move on here? <laughs> probably. All right. Oh, good! And we started the research! So we can go ahead and do Hornblower to issue commands to the Ambu, which it may or may not follow. Allows you to click on crossroads on the world map to decide which way to go, instead of the Ambu kind of deciding for us. And we don't really have uh, crossroads at the moment, at least in the world map that we could see. So let's go ahead and commit to the kitchen so that we can make better processed food out of the berries, beets. And if you get really desperate, you can even tap into the ombu itself, which I just could not bring myself to do, but maybe if it was that or die. And you can actually drain some of the blood from the ombu and drink its blood, uh, which is actually something a lot of nomadic people would do in their relationships with their animals. Uh, like the the Huns and like people across Mongolia, other nomadic tri would use horse blood from the horses that they cared for. Uh, but like while you're on a big travel mission, they'd nick just a little spot, have some blood as nutrients, and then just keep going with the horse. And people do that with camels as well. So there is a precedence in our own shared human history for that. However, I really hope it never comes to that. But let's do the kitchen because having the scavenger hunt is going to be amazing. And we're going to need to go ahead and have the carpentry and we're going to need to have the stone cutter in order to yeah in order to build the scavenger hut Whew. oh wait build cost for the kitchen is also Ooh. okay so we're gonna work on that and we have two scientists dedicated to it but it sounds like we're gonna also want to have a carpenter makes planks from wood i feel like having the carpenter back here would be good kind of close to the village obviously set up more or less right next to <laughs> right next to the giant tree where we're going to put a sawmill eventually so we'll put the carpenter here and give it kind of like medium priority because i think the yeah the air well i feel like the air well should have highest priority tent will have lower priority material storage all right we need more trees cut down that's our problem Oh, and the worker hut would actually help us out because then we can make them transporters, harvesters, or builders. Here, we'll put that next to the research hut because I feel like that would be quite clever. Yeah, we'll put that as a, a little bit of a low priority. Probably would be helpful to have, but so would a lot of other things. All right. How's everybody doing here? Look at them. Look at our little town. I'm really proud of what we've done so far. I'm mildly concerned that our Ambu hasn't woken up. Uh, I'm hoping we have enough food <laughs> to be able to go ahead. Uh, yeah, we're, we're producing 11 food. We're consuming 25 every day. Let's hope that maybe we can get a few more berries, like berry collecting team. Maybe the kitchen research will help. Uh, all right, and then we can actually go ahead. Yeah, we can speed things up. The Ambu is getting less sleepy, so theoretically it should wake up sooner than later. Oh, and, okay, we still have enough rocks marked. Good. Yeah, just sending out a scavenging group for the ability... Oh, and there's some of its mushrooms. Good. But sending out a scavenging group so that we can go ahead and we can get plenty of our rocks and other things is going to be very, very important, I think. All right. Oh, are you moving around? See, until we can, until we have like the horn and until we do more research into being able to form a trusting, loving partnership with our Ambu, then we're not going to be able to go ahead and like tell it what to do. Right now, we're just kind of like little parasites on its back. <laughs> oh, yay. Okay, we're coming along. Day two. Still running a little low on food. Just enough to keep me feeling you know, mildly concerned. 
But look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Oh, the Umbu's getting up. The Umbu's awake. Look at all, all of its legs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So its sleepiness is now gone. Uh, what's, let's see, our research on the kitchen is about halfway there. And here we go, friends. When the Ambu wishes to move, all we can do at the moment is simply accept the path that it places us on. We truly must put our fate, our future, and our hope into the extremely large hands, or perhaps across the very broad back, of a creature that we are going to have a very important relationship with forever after. Ah, oh, all right. Hopefully we'll be able to go ahead and we'll be able to make the most of this, but whew, I think, I think we're going to be being a little bit zippy friends, trying to get this little village set up. How fast is the Ambu moving? All right. We'll have to see. There's mines that we could go ahead and raid. There's Ambu feeding spots. We could tell the Ambu to slow down at. We're gonna miss that shrine, but we are currently lost somewhere in the world where it's very cold. So the plants aren't going to grow very well. And all we can really hope for is that the Ambu will guide us well until we're able to go ahead and establish that relationship with it. That will let it know, hello, we are here. Please listen to us so that we can all try to survive together. So if you guys would, do please leave a like for, uh, let's see, our Anbu, what do I call it? Nuumbu? Nubu. Nubu? Nubu. There we go. If you could leave a like for Nubu, who is going to go ahead and guide us into the future and hopefully be with us for eons and eons as we follow legacies of our people and if you'd like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures do please consider subscribing but most importantly my friends stay curious and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye